I'm Jim Gordon. The people I work with call me Mr. Gordon. At least when I'm around, they do. They're about your age. That's right, your age. You see, I'm principal of Lincoln High School. My job is to help boys and girls be the kind of young men and women they'd like to be. Capable, educated, and responsible. This sheet of paper is mighty important to two of our young people. I don't know what's on it, but I do know that it could make a big difference in the lives of Hank Evans and Lloyd Smith. However, the contents of the paper would make the most difference to Hank Evans. Before I look at it, I'd like to tell you some things about Hank Evans. And I know more about him than he thinks I know. Hank Evans came to Lincoln High School from Lowell School. His older sister Vera had been one of our best students, and we were glad to have another Evans at Lincoln. It was the opening day of school, and Hank was in the midst of... Jane Cox? Here. Henry Evans? Here. You're Vera Evans' brother, aren't you? I had Vera last Yeah, I'm her brother, but can't I be just plain Hank Evans? Lloyd Smith? Here. Hank Evans had a right to expect that he be treated as an individual, not just as Vera Evans' younger brother. But it's the things that come out after you've known a person a while that really tell you about him. For instance, about the third week of school in Miss Jackson's English class, Hank decided... Very important to discover why Shakespeare introduced the ghost into this scene. Now, just a moment now, just a minute. Will you please follow through on chapters 9 and 10, just as you did chapter 8 today, and be ready to discuss the law. We got that now, chapters 9 and 10. All right, we may go now. Hi, Sam. Hi, Lloyd. How's the boy? How are you? Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Hi, Oh, why don't they let us out of class on time? I've got to go clear over to the other side of the building. Oh, I know what you mean. I got the same... Miss Jackson, I'm sorry, but I didn't get the complete assignment for tomorrow. There was so much noise in the hall. I know, and I'm sorry. It's chapters 9 and 10. Read them and be ready to discuss them tomorrow. Chapters 9 and 10. Read and be ready to recite in class, as we have been doing. Is that it? That's it. And I promise not to wait until the end of the period to make the assignment next time. Thank you. I'm glad that's done. Homework in every class but Miss Jackson's. It's a wonder she didn't... say, she did say something about two chapters. But what? And what two chapters? Oh. All finished with it? Yeah, all I can get. I think I was supposed to do some English, but I don't know. And you better find out? Oh, gee whiz, how can I? She threw some stuff at us right at the end of the hour. Nobody could have got it if I didn't. They might have. Why don't you call someone? Oh, all right, I'll call Lloyd Smith. Maybe he'll know. 2903. Lloyd? Hank. Hey, what did Miss Jackson assign for class tomorrow? Well, she said to read chapters 9 and 10. I guess she meant so we could decide on them just as we have been doing. Anyway, that's what I'm going to study. If we don't do it tomorrow, we'll have to do it later anyhow. But you don't know for sure. Well, thanks, Lloyd. Goodbye. Chapters 9 and 10. Maybe, if it's not 9 and 10, well, then I've read them for nothing. Besides, I've done enough work for one night. Perhaps Hank wasn't entirely to blame that he wasn't prepared for English class the next day. But Beverly Anderson was prepared. She had taken it upon herself to make sure what she was supposed to do and had written it down so it wouldn't slip her mind. Lloyd Smith could contribute to the class discussion too because he had learned that you can't let things slide and expect to keep up. And Hank? Oh, he had a couple of bad moments. He hardly knew what was being talked about, but he managed to avoid being called on to recite, and no one except himself was the wiser. I could unfold this slip of paper right now and see whether we, the teachers and I, have been wrong, and Hank Evans has been right. Does it make any difference if you let things slide once in a while? But let me tell you another incident in Hank's career. 
He and Lloyd Smith used to get their lessons together. It was an even-up proposition. Neither one of them did more work than the other. Quantity x minus 3 times quantity x minus 5. Hey, look here, Lloyd. This isn't going to prove out. We've got a mistake somewhere. Well, maybe it's up here in this first substitution. Hey, how'd that 5 get in there? Hey, that's it. How'd we miss that? Let's see. Well, it's going to factor now. Sure it is. Of all the dumb mistakes. And that finishes the problems, too. Yeah, as soon as we can copy them over. Copy them over? What for? Well, I've figured all over the place. Mr. Ellis will never be able to find my answers. I'll draw a circle around the answers. He wants to see how we got them, doesn't he? Well, sure. I intended to put in all the figuring, but, but like there, where you marked out all that stuff. Don't you want to copy it over so it'll look better? Ah, is this art or algebra? I got all the answers, and they're all right. That's all I care about. Well, I think I'll copy mine. Suit yourself. It may not be quite fair to say that this attitude toward his work was what you remembered about Hank Evans. Hank was friendly, intelligent, popular, and had a way with people. Most of the time, he was an asset to Lincoln High and to himself. But there were times... Say, did you get your theme finished? Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty good. I've only got about four more pages to type. To type? Why, they're supposed to be handed in this morning. But Miss Granby said they were due on the 27th. I've got news for you, boy. This is the 27th, Wednesday the 27th. But we always hand themes in on Friday. I didn't look it up. I just naturally thought Friday was the 27th. How'd you ever let a thing like that slip your mind? For probably the first time, Hank couldn't make anyone see how reasonable his error had been. Miss Granby asked him to see her after class. Hank, I've wanted to talk with you for some time. I have your theme here, the one that came in two days late. But I told Please, you... Please, Hank, let me finish. This is an excellent theme. It's well written. And for once, you've taken the trouble to make it neat. But it was late. Miss Granby, There's I... more, Hank. Not all we asked for is here. A part of the assignment was to make an outline for the theme, too. An outline? You knew you were supposed to make an outline. Why didn't you? I didn't think it was important. If I can write a good theme without making an outline, why do I have to? That's not the point. Hank, I can teach you how to punctuate and spell and how to write themes. But more important, you must learn to face responsibility. While you're a student at Lincoln High, it's your job to know what the lesson is, how it's to be done, and when it's expected. I can't make you responsible. That you have to do for yourself. That's all, Hank. Thank you. That's appreciation for you. After all the work I went to. Huh. My responsibility, she says. I know what's the matter. My sister Vera always made straight A's. And everybody thinks I've got to be just like her. All the teachers who taught Vera will be on my neck, no matter what I do. Well, maybe Hank Evans did get something from that talk. Because after that, he took special pains to find out the what, when, and how in Miss Granby's classes. But people don't change completely as a result of one conversation over one assignment. Often it takes something big to convince a fellow he's on the wrong track and really needs to mend his ways. Maybe this is the something big for Hank Evans. What is it? Didn't I tell you? This is one vote in the school election. But there's one story about Hank I would like to tell you before I tell you about the election. Last year, Hank Evans went out for the debate team. He and Beverly Anderson were selected for the affirmative against Wilson High. In the practice session, Hank and Beverly were pitted against Lloyd Smith and Elsie Taylor. Since our opponents have failed to establish any basis for a change, we must realize that this contention should stand as stated. Fine job, Hank. I wish I could make things sound as good as you do. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing. At least Bev doesn't think so. Well, what's the matter? Don't you like the way your partner mowed us down? Oh, sure. He's great with his gift of gab. But all the facts are in my file box. Oh, Bev's a great one for facts. You ought to see inside that file box. 
It's full of resolutions and quotations. Well, all I can say is, somebody's going to get wise that his arguments are nobody's opinion but his own. Me, I like to be prepared. Oh, that's a good scout. Hey, I'm rich. Come on, I'll buy you all a soda. Good wow, deal. Let's I go. Don't care. Hank didn't make many notes or collect many facts. He didn't think it was worth doing. And the idea that he wasn't doing his share didn't even occur to him. Not until the debate tournament got underway. Then, not being sure of his facts and faced by students from Wilson who knew their facts, Hank began to suffer from a strange, terrible malady, stage fright. With stage fright, his ability to make his argument sound convincing evaporated. It was pretty bad. He knew that he had let Beverly down, and not just Beverly, but the school. The tournament was lost, of course. Lincoln lost because of Hank Evans, the guy who could have prepared himself, but didn't. Could he be trusted again? Another test was coming up very soon for Hank Evans. Not an ordinary test. It might be better to call it a judgment of Hank by his fellow students. Hank was nominated for president of the student body, and the other candidate was his friend, Lloyd Smith. The election was held this morning during the first period. For president, Hank Evans and Lloyd Smith, vote for one. Which one? Hank? He's friendly, popular, good-looking. He'd give outsiders a good impression of the school. Or would he? Lloyd Smith? Not quite so cocksure, but a good student. Dependable. Always responsible. He never lets you down. Hank Evans or Lloyd Smith? Vote for one. Which one? Each of the boys had something to recommend him, and each had his followers. We knew the election was going to be close. Look, it's a tie. It's hot. 195 oh. votes apiece. Hey, you guys, look at the tie. What do we do now? Mr. Gordon, it's a tie. Hank and Lloyd both have the same number of votes. Are you sure? We've checked and rechecked. It comes out the same. A deadlock. Does this mean we have to hold the election over? Well, perhaps not. Doesn't your Constitution provide for an absentee ballot? Yeah, but was anybody absent? Well, let's have Miss Jenkins check to see if there are any absentees this morning. If there were, they should be allowed to vote, too. Yeah, but I wonder who was absent here? this morning. How about you know? English? There was only one person absent this morning, and his vote will determine who will be elected. How was he voted? For Hank, the more popular one, or for Lloyd, the more responsible one? Here it is, the one vote that decides the election. Is it for Hank or for Lloyd? How would you vote? Why? Mm -hmm.